Hi, beautiful ones. So we are going to have a big conversation about food and I'm going to go into depth around my diet over the past few years and the diet, uh, we're gonna just talk about diet in general. Uh, we're gonna talk about this topic because we all seem to have this idea that there is this one particular diet that heals the body. And so I've shared information on this in my other videos, but I really want to dive into the topic of food in more depth because this seems to be a topic of major confusion for us and mental breakdown and neuroses in many senses. You know, when we're on this healing path and we're told you need to cut out all of these things, it's bad for hormones, it's bad for the body, it's bad for detox, it's bad for PCOS hear me repeat that word bad 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 again and again and that restrictive way of being is just toxic within itself so let's start talking about the topic of food so that you can start to feel more like ease and more relaxation in this area because this healing path is supposed to be fun this healing path if you were constantly feeling restricted and overwhelmed and just like awful and you're not enjoying it then you're not doing it right and it's not sustainable and I'm going to touch on why that's such a key part of the healing journey a little bit later in this video. So to get started, I'm going to talk about the chapters of my life that have been unfolding in the recent years. I'm going to talk about the meals I was eating and you're going to see some very, very clear transitions that have played out for me in relation to the three macronutrients and balancing and learning about these macronutrients being fat, protein and carbohydrates. So I want you to just listen to the video and just see what you can learn and what insights and downloads drop in for your own experience because of course I make these videos so that you can speed up this process. For me, something may have taken a few years that could take you six months, 12 months max. So obviously I just wanna provide that support and information. So make sure you've got a pen and paper if that feels in resonance and just listen and you know rewatch the video if you need to and just take any important insights and then just see what you can implement into your own life. So as you all know, or many of you know, who are familiar with my videos, you'll know that my healing journey began in New York City, which is when I ultimately had a huge body breakdown in which my hair was falling out in huge handfuls. I had cystic acne covering my face from here to here. Uh, I was gaining weight uncontrollably despite being on a low calorie diet and working out at the gym six or seven times a week. I developed like this really dark body hair all over my body. I was having a lot of digestive issues. I had fungus in my body. I was having thrush. I had cancerous cells show up in my uterus. And by this stage, I stopped seeing doctors. So I was never officially diagnosed, but I was displaying all the symptoms of endometriosis, which is essentially just the worst pain ever. And I've had a cyst erupt on my ovary. And I have to say endometriosis is, even competes with that because it's just pain everywhere all through your hips your uterus your back and it's it's intense so i was facing all of this stuff at the same time and so initially when i went on the healing journey in new york i started a diet in which i was eating balance i was eating balanced macronutrients and i provided this information in in my earlier videos and my most popular video, the eight step program, I provide this balance equation, which is very much so healing for the adrenals. And this is why I provide this. And this is why it was initially helping me because it's all about balancing blood sugar. And it's about inviting in a lot of whole foods and finding this balance equation. So I was doing a lot of that. I started eating meat for the first time in my life because I was vegetarian my entire life. I always, since I was a baby, just refused to eat eggs, refused to eat meat. I'd eaten eggs since around like 18 or 19, but I had never eaten meat. Like I was never into bacon or red meat or any of these kinds of things. And so when I was diagnosed with PCOS and I did all of the books and I did all of the PCOS diets, I was like, okay, so you have to eat a lot of animal protein because carbs isn't so great because we're not metabolizing the carb with insulin resistance. And so I started doing the high fat diet and I started doing a lot of fat, you know, good fats, but tons. Like I would eat a whole bag of pumpkin seeds, whole bag of sunflower seeds. I was eating coconut oil by like the scoopful, putting so much on my kale and sweet potato. I was eating probably one to two avocados a day. I was eating a lot of fat. And so... The funny thing is, is that my body started to heal. My body did start to heal on this diet. And so 
this is the first transition I moved through, the balancing, because I was starting to heal my adrenals. I was no longer doing blood sugar um, spikes and, you know, going up and down, up and down. I was resting more. I started meditating and all of these things. And this diet seemed to be helping me, you know, getting the whole grains. I was having a lot of brown rice, a lot of quinoa. And so that was getting my bowels moving as well, you know. So there was a lot of fiber coming into my body. And so this balanced way of eating, which was just tons of sweet potato, tons of fat. I was eating quite a bit of salmon, a bit of fish. Um, I wasn't really eating any other protein aside from like salmon and different fish. Uh, tons of eggs, was eating so many eggs, sometimes morning and night. If I couldn't be bothered to eat, like cook something for dinner, I would just make some eggs and kale and sweet potato. So this is the diet that I started out on and my body started to get better. So then the first time fruit came into my realm, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, is when I went to Florida and my boyfriend's doctor told me, you know, I was, I went on a candida diet and I cut out all carbohydrates and I told her, I like, I feel really sick. I feel really awful. And she told me I need to start eating fruit. And so this was the first time I felt challenged by the idea of fruit because I had read in so many books that, you know, fruit is too high in sugar. I was just a huge skeptic. I was like, no fruit's going to make my blood sugar unstable, you know, and I could actually sit down and have a bowl of fruit and I didn't feel well. I felt really shaky. I just felt unsatisfied. If I had tried to go to work on a bowl of fruit, I would have felt like crap. I would have been crying. I would have had that huge dip um, because my adrenals were burnt out. My adrenals were really, really weak at that stage of the game. So then I leave New York and the next place I lived was Bali in which I tried to take this way of eating to Bali. So the balance, the lots of grains, lots of, you know, the equal balance of protein, some fats, lots of vegetables still wasn't really into the fruit thing because even though that had helped me and I was eating a bit of fruit, I was still skeptical and I was just like, yeah. And so then I went to Bali and then my body really starts to heal because I left, I quit my job and was just focused on healing. And so this is when like my period came back, acne was radically starting to improve. This is at the point in which hair shedding stopped right towards the end of Bali is when I like had my last big shedding cycle. And so things were improving in Bali, although I was eating lots of soy, I was eating completely vegan in Bali. By this stage, I had worked out that actually animal protein was prohibiting me from receiving my period. And then I started to find a little bit more re information and it's hard to find because so many people out there are spreading the high protein diet myth and it's hard to find. But I started to find more research studies that shows that high protein diet makes uh, women, um, prevents women from ovulating and it increases estrogen dominance. And I started to find all of these little things and I was like, ah, oh, this makes sense. So in Bali, I was just completely vegan and that's when everything starts to shift. So was it the lack of stress or was it the vegan diet? We can't really know, but I'm assuming it was both of them. So then in Bali, I'm eating tons of tempeh. I'm eating vegan desserts every day. I'm still really suffering with an eating disorder, which I'm going to do a whole nother video on, but I'm going to be touching on the eating disorder and the addiction to overeating a little bit in this video because it's very, very relevant to this story. So I'm still suffering with a eating disorder in which I'm just constantly craving sweet foods. I'm constantly craving more and more food. I would go home at nighttime, even after a beautiful event out with my friends, and I would just be thinking about food. And so I still hadn't healed that, that component, you know? And so um, Bali was amazing. It was very, very healing, but you know, there was still a lot going on. So my PCOS symptoms had really died down and I had a regular period, but there were still other things going on, more so in an inward feeling, like I was still having back pain, still having body pain, still had low energy, still had blood sugar dips. Um, you know, there were just things here and there, you know, the acne scars weren't completely disappeared. I was still just feeling inflamed. I was still feeling inflamed. I was still feeling um, unstable emotionally. There were still things going on that I wasn't completely aware of. I was kind of like, I'm healed. But the truth is, I wasn't really feeling 100%. I wasn't feeling completely well in my body. So then from Bali, the next chapter, went back to Australia for six weeks, got prepared to move to India, in which I lived there for six months. So in, in India is the next time fruit came into my realm, I guess you could say, is because I started to develop 
uh, back knee, like acne all over my back. My face was pretty much clear aside from like, I would get like some big cystic ones just on my cheeks, which is the liver. Um, but then it was like my back had a lot of back knee. And so I started to go to this Ayurvedic doctor in Rishikesh and he just looked at me and he's like, your pitta is really out there, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you need to go on Trifala. Trifala is when I, this is when I started taking Trifala because my colon was really toxic. And he's like, you need to start eating fruit. You really, really need to start eating fruit. And then again, I was like thinking about the doctor in Florida. I'm just like, why do people keep telling me to eat fruit? So I ate a little bit of fruit here and there. I would, you know, make, I would get huge pomegranates. I would put it on my oatmeal, still eating tons of grains, still had a crazy eating disorder, which really fled up in India because there was just a lot going on emotionally for me in India. And I was facing periods of intense loneliness and I was just going through intense emotional purges sitting by the Ganga River every day, just crazy stuff going on. And so I was definitely still dependent on food as a source of nourishment and fulfillment and pleasure and joy. And the eating disorder really flared up around the time I started dating my yoga teacher, total mess, and started running yoga retreats with him on his, at his ashram. And our relationship was so toxic. Like it was beautiful because we were such a mirror for, for each other, but he mirrored to me all of my insecurities and then I would numb out with food. So we'd be teaching during the day and I would like be teaching meditation and whatnot. But then I would go back to my room at night and just eat because I was just so unstable. And it was just this way I would feel grounded within my being and I couldn't control it. I literally couldn't control it. It was just like, I was just eating to the point of feeling so sick. So then I get really sick and I don't know if it was the relationship, if it was the overeating, if it was the fact that I started eating Indian food, but I got really, really sick. Not just once, I had three cycles over six weeks in which I was so ill to the point where I thought I was going to die. It would go away and then I was like, okay, I can stay, I can stay. And then it would come back. And so the whole period I was just so sick and so I was like, okay, that's it. I have to leave India. I feel like I was kicked out of India. I wanted to stay. It felt like my soul wanted to stay, but it just felt like the higher intelligence, you know, ruling this earth was like, nah, you need to go heal your body. You need to leave this relationship. You need to get out of here. So then I left India and came to Thailand for a little while and healed my body back again. And, you know, I wasn't displaying any of the symptoms of PCOS, but there were still things showing up. And so then... This is where this whole, you know, thing starts to transform. By this stage, I'm still just eating grains. I'm still eating fats. Um, I've been vegan since Bali, uh, not really eating dairy, but India got pretty bad. I started to eat quite a bit of dairy. I was eating a lot of yogurt, drinking a lot of chai tea every day. <clears throat> so my diet's still all over the place, you know, like my diet is still all over the place. And then I go to Costa Rica, which is when things start to transform because I live in a spiritual detox community for three months in which all of the produce on the grounds is organic. Like you can't get anything that's not organic. It's all fresh fruit and vegetables. That's literally all you're eating, plus some rice and beans and whatnot. And then I meet a gorgeous friend of mine there who is the biggest mirror for me because she's having all of the same symptoms that I'm still showing on my body we connect over the fact that we still have chronic scalp psoriasis and by this stage after India my scalp psoriasis was the main symptom I was showing but it was so bad every single night I was waking up itching 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 it was just it was so inflamed my liver is just like, even though I've healed a lot of the PCOS, like the surface layer stuff, there's still something going in on inside of me because the liver is just so overwhelmed. You know, I did a couple of liver flushes in Thailand and I was so sick. I could just tell this organ of my body was weak, especially because I was still facing a lot of anger. As I've mentioned before in my other videos, every time I got a massage, a lot of anger would come up towards the masculine mostly, but I was still developed, like I still had that like rage living inside of me that wanted to come out every now and then. It's like, is it safe to come out? And I was like, no, like I'm not an angry person. Like I'm a health coach. Everything's okay. I'm healed. So I was massively in denial. And then Costa Rica was an awakening for me because my friend had really crazy scalp psoriasis that she was healing she told me about medical medium and she was like yeah so he's all for fruit and like raw and lots of vegetables and all of these things 
And so she's been on, she, I don't know if she would classify herself as a fruitarian, but she's on a high, high fruit diet. And she introduces me to that and she goes, I think you should do it with me. I'm like, no way. You know, I, by this stage, I'm a, I'm a specialist in balancing hormones and I'm coaching women on balancing hormones, on blood sugar stability. And you need grains, you need balanced fats, you need balanced proteins, all of these things. You're telling me that you eat fruit majority of the day and you have a salad in the evening, you're crazy. I was triggered. I was so triggered and I was kind of arguing with her. And then my sister, who I'm in Costa Rica with, she's like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it with our friend. And so they're eating fruit and they're just like glowing. They're radiant. They're amazing. Like they just look amazing. And I'm like, okay. So I start a 10 day silent meditation retreat. And I'm observing my sister. We can't talk. We're not even allowed to make eye contact. But she's just making big plates of fruit. Every morning she's making fruit. I'm still numbing out. You know, I'm in silence. And so I'm just like, like there's so much stuff coming up that I'm still like going to the kitchen and making like lot tons of food, eating really heavy foods, like lots of beans and rice and gu guacamole and all of these things, just numbing out. And she's just glowing, eating watermelon and pineapple. So I'm pretty triggered. I'm just like, okay, maybe I can try doing the fruit. So I went on the fruit diet whilst I was in the middle of the most intense 10 days of silence I have ever experienced. And I've done a few 10 days silent retreats. And this one was brutal. Like I was so uncomfortable in my body. I was done with the meditations. I'm just like, oh, I need to scream. I need attention. Like no one's looking at me. No one's talking to me. It was intense. So then I'm like, okay, maybe the fruit's going to help make this experience lighter. So I start eating the fruit and something else just happens in which I start sleeping a lot less and waking up feeling like I could jump out of bed. My skin starts glowing and literally any blemishes or bumps I had just start to disappear. And my body is just sending me all these signals that fruit is just vibrating and resonating with every cell within my body. And so the mind is still skeptical and it's fearful. No, it's too much sugar. No, this doesn't keep my blood sugar stable. But generally, generally speaking, I was feeling really, really good. And then the psoriasis becomes a lot less itchy and I'm sleeping through the whole night without waking up, scratching, scratching. So I'm like, okay, this is good. And so like I had a lot of major resistance and this started to dissolve slowly, slowly. And so then I moved back to Australia and for a whole year, I was eating mostly pretty much fruit. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, I still, you know, was feeling like I needed a little something more. So I was making a lot of banana date cacao smoothies with a little bit of avocado, maybe a quarter of an avocado, half an avocado, <clears throat> eating tons of melons, <clears throat> eating a lot of watermelon, a lot of pineapple, a lot of um, cantaloupe, rock melon, we call it in Australia. Uh, just eating tons of these things and then eating a lot of cooked veggies as well. A lot of raw salads, a lot of tahini dressings, a uh, little bit of grains here and there. But, you know, predominantly speaking, 80% of my diet was raw fruit. So I did that for the whole year. And I'm so grateful for that because I don't think I would have been able to write the entire intuitive healing program in the span of like six months if I wasn't on that fruit diet, because I would spring out of bed at 4.30 every morning. Sometimes I would speak to my clients. They're like, what time is it in Australia? I'm like, four o'clock. They're like, are you crazy? I'm like, no, I'm just on a fruit diet. And this is what happens. So I was springing out of bed with so much creativity, just like downloads and downloads of information that I'm just like channeling into this program. I'm focused, I'm energized, I'm doing 90 minutes of hot yoga, yet still just surviving on a lot of fruit. So I'm pretty much challenging all the paradigms I've ever held to be true around food. And, you know, the mind, of course, throughout that year was still skeptical of just like, no, like you need more protein. What about your amino acids? What about B12, iron, like all of these things. And so I'm facing all of my programs. So throughout that year, what happened was I was pretty much faced with and invited to look at all of my belief systems when it comes to food and what I need to survive and thrive as a human being. So what I will say is that, you know, you can see that there has been transitions that I've moved through and none, there was no one particular thing that I needed 
in order to heal my body. You can see that all of them played a role in healing the body, which is why in the program I created, we move through transitions. And this is why I invite all of you to experiment with your body and move through transitions because there is not one diet that fits all. There's no even one diet that will fit you forever. You're so dynamic. Your body is so resilient. It's so complex you are going to constantly need to up level what you think you need. And this is why I share this story. I want to share my own experience so you can see that this process is about experimentation. You know, that's really, really what it is. It's an experimentation process to see what your body needs. So what I want to share with you is some things and information that I can see very clearly to be true about this journey of healing PCOS, healing hormonal imbalance, healing any disease in the body. Initially, if there are weak adrenals, which there have to be, if you've had a body breakdown and if you're facing that blood sugar instability, then initially fats are very conducive and loving thing to include into your diet. Why? Because, you know, fats help to, you know, really sustain your energy and it helps to keep the blood sugar balance. It did certainly for me. And also, you know, fat, fat is something, and I've mentioned this in another video, it's, it, it really absorbs things in the body. It's kind of like a buffer, you know, fat just creates, it's like, it's a very smooth energy. Uh, as opposed to when you eat some fruit or you just eat vegetables, perhaps initially, if your adrenals are down, you're not going to get that same experience as you will incorporating some fats in. So initially, I really do believe it is important to have some fat. And then as your liver naturally moves through a process where it has detoxified and your body starts to clear out, you're having a daily bowel movement, things are starting to feel more balanced, your emotions are starting to feel more balanced, then what happens is you will naturally crave less and less fat. And to the point where, you know, if I have, oh my goodness, I was, I was eat, consuming so much fat and I was so happy on that and it was sustaining me, even though I didn't have really high energy levels. Whereas if I try and eat that now, the other day I went out to breakfast and had a smoothie bowl and it was just like spirulina, banana, all of these things. But then on top, it was coconut, it was nuts, it was seeds, it was just tons of different, all these kinds of fats. And I ate it and I felt so ill after because my body has adapted to the fact that it doesn't need that much fat anymore. So as you make this transition and you move through this journey, what you'll see is the body changes and it starts to require different things and it will inform you through your cravings and it will inform you through the data that you collect through eating certain meals and then being like, okay, that felt good. Okay, that felt a little heavy. I don't think I need that. Also remembering that as you move through your monthly cycle, your body is naturally going to crave different levels of things, may crave a bit more fat, may crave a little bit more carbs through sweet potato or some light grains like quinoa and millet, all of these things. And then you'll eat those things and it will feel good in the body and it'll feel like it's really being utilized for energy. You don't feel heavy. You don't feel, feel lethargic and feel really full and heavy in the belly. This is the light bulb moment in which you can start really educating yourself about your own physical needs. And this is why the intuitive eating path is so important because, you know, it's going to be different for everyone. And there's also that added complexity for many of us who are facing binge eating disorder and the overeating thing. And I'm going to do an, my next video, I believe, is going to be on this topic because that's just a whole nother topic to cover. But it's like, how do we stay on this healing path and stay on a diet that is really nourishing for the body when we cannot control our addiction to overeating because it's our source of fulfillment and pleasure? So aside from the fat, what I've learned is that I really want you to all start challenging your belief systems about protein. Like protein is just, we have been fed so much misinformation about protein. We need proteins. We need it for the amino acids. You know, first of all, most of the amino acids that we need actually created in the body. And then any of the additional amino acids that we need to survive can be found in plants. And so, you know, many of you have grown up eating animal protein and animal protein is a stimulant in the body. So is dairy. 
And so there's going to naturally be an addiction, not only towards the mental program of needing this, of needing eggs, of needing like, um, of needing animal protein and fish. And, you know, it could even be for like needing lots of nuts and whatnot. There could be an addiction there for you, not only because of the mental program you're running, but because of your physical biochemistry of your, you can feel your body feels that stimulus when you have the protein. And so I really, really want you to start challenging all of these ideas you have around protein because, you know, I, I haven't been incorporating protein as like a macronutrient into my diet for over a year now. You know, I'm never thinking, and I used to do this. I used to do this initially. And maybe this was exactly where I needed to be. Maybe it was necessary. I used to look at my plate and be like, well, where's the protein? I need the protein that needs to make up 25% of the plate. Although now it's like, I, I don't ever have that thought. I never have that thought of like, but there's not protein in this salad or because I know what you receive in plants and I can feel in my body, I'm starting to feel healthier than I have my entire 27 years on this planet. Really, I'm starting to feel very, very healthy. And it's not because I'm incorporating protein and I'm balancing fats and all these things. It's because I'm listening to my body which takes me to the most important part of this video. And I let's see how long the video is. I hope that you're still 26 minutes. My goodness, they're just getting out of control nowadays. This is the most important part of the video, which is you can, I've shared these transitions so that you can see that there is no one complete way. But the most important thing I can ever, ever tell any of you is that the healing equation this is not going to be spot on, but this feels pretty accurate and it really resonates with my own intuitive knowing. The healing journey is probably around 30% food and 70% emotions. And it could even be more like 20% food, 80% emotions. I kid you not. And this is why this is why it makes sense for many of you who are on a healthy diet, but you're not feeling so good emotionally or there's some things going on in your life that you're not seeing radical results. And this is why when I left New York and I went to Bali, even though I was eating soy and even though I was eating tons of vegan desserts, even though I still had the, eat, um, the eating disorder and was eating tons and overeating and I was doing a lot of wrong things for my body, but my body was radically improving. Why? Because I was happy. I was so happy. I was surrounded by people who love me. I was doing ecstatic dance. I was in nature, you know, Mama Bali is so nourishing. Like there was just so much that was offering me on an emotional level, which has helped me to see our emotions inform the hormones in our body and they inform the way our adrenals function. They inf inform, you know, um, our emotions inform the way our endocrine system operates. And so what I'm saying here is that your emotions that are moving throughout your system are offering information to the hormonal ratios that are secreting and playing out within your body. And this might be a mismatch for your healthy diet. You know, you could be eating and detoxing and eating all the right things and doing really well. But if your hormones are telling your if your sorry, if your emotions are telling your hormones something different, then it's not a match. And that healing doesn't start to take place in a really, really radical way. So remember that it's not so much about what you were eating. It is about how you are feeling about what you were eating. And this is why it's really important for us to not make foods bad or wrong or create too much dogma in the area of like, no, like that's wrong and that's wrong. You know, that's it's good to inform yourself and to know what foods and these molecules and these macronutrients, what they are actually doing to your body. Yeah, that's great. But to a certain extent, we have to surpass that level of education and wisdom. We have to start seeing that it goes beyond just the physical alone and that we are actually energetic beings. And so therefore how we are feeling energetically, emotionally, you know, how and our emotions are informed by our thoughts. So how we are thinking and how we, all of these thoughts that are playing out in our mind every single day, we have to start thinking about this stuff as the core principle that truly heals the body. Otherwise we don't get anywhere. Otherwise, you may get somewhere, but you really can't surpass that next level. And that's what we all want, right? 
we all want to keep surpassing that next level and pushing through that next threshold. It was fantastic for me to move to Bali and see all of these changes and get my period back and make that video, how to bring back your period. And you can see how shiny I am and how excited I am. But I was still suffering. There were still things going on in my body. And so the idea is that we go to the next level and we feel a little better. We're like, oh, this is great. But it's like, it's an up leveling. You know, the healing journey, it doesn't end. It's not just like, okay, now, you know, at some point you may, at some point you very well may, and I know I will get to a point where you're like, I'm done with healing. I'm just going to find balance and I'm just going to listen to my body and I'm good. You know, I don't display any symptoms. I feel really good in my being. That's the ultimate uh, objective. But simultaneously, remember that it's always just like this dance with life and dance with your body and your intuition and knowing what feels good for you day to day, month to month, year to year, knowing that it's always changing. You're never going to have to stick to one thing. You're dynamic. So it's just about finding what works for you, knowing that there isn't just one, one size fits all. And this video was to show you, see how many transitions I went through. They were all healing for me. They all helped my body. And, you know, also just working with the emotional side of things, knowing that the eating disorder, the overeating and, you know, the eating all of your foods you use as a crutch or the coffee or the alcohol, the stimulants, the meat, we can't really address and bring all of those things back into balance without addressing the emotional world. So I'm going to leave that video there for now. I've got um, more topics coming up soon enough. I'll be discussing more about addiction to overeating and eating disorders. Um, and so if you have any questions or there are things that you want me to talk on that I haven't covered, make sure you reach out to me. You can follow me on Instagram, reach out to me there or just leave a comment. And so I can start creating information that's really going to support you along this journey of coming back into balance within your own being. I love you. Bye.